Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 505. Today, we're going to talk about what I see coming for us as Whistlekick in the next year. My name's Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show. I'm the Whistlekick founder, and everything we're doing here at Whistlekick is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you're interested in what we're doing to that end, hop over to whistlekick.com. That's our online home. It's also the best place to find our store. And in that store, you'll find a bunch of products for traditional martial artists. And if you make a purchase, you support our work and you can even save 15% by using the code podcast15. This show, Martial Arts Radio, gets its own website and that is whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. The show comes out twice a week and the goal of the show, it's about educating and connecting and entertaining traditional martial artists throughout the world because I believe we have far more in common than we do that divides us. If you want to help the show and the work that we do, there are plenty of ways you can help. You can make a purchase. You can share an episode. Follow us on social media. Maybe tell a friend. Pick up one of our books or programs. Leave a review or support the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. That's the place to go. Patreon's a place where we post exclusive content. Photos and videos and blog posts and audio. And if you contribute as little as $5 a month, you get access to it. A few weeks ago, we did an episode talking about where I saw the martial arts industry heading over the next while. There were some predictions. They weren't pinned down any specific time. But people were asking me, Jeremy, what's going on with you? What's going on with Whistlekick in the near future? And I've talked a little bit about this. Uh, honestly, I talk more about this stuff on Patreon because I feel like the Patreon contributors are the ones who really like the behind the scenes stuff the most, but when you all reach out and you ask questions, I'm happy to answer them. And that's what today's episode is about. It's not going to be really long. And in some of what I'm talking about, you will likely see some further predictions about the industry and business and the world. But here we go. I don't typically talk about dates when we record episodes, but I am recording this on May 13th, 2020. And What's going on right now? We are hopefully on the tail end of the economic impact of COVID 19. It is probably no surprise to you that COVID 19 has had a horrible impact on our business. We watched our sales virtually dry up overnight. It was mind blowing. And of course, that creates some economic difficulty. Now, what's interesting about that is that it's starting to come back, but it's not going to come back overnight because there are losses. Our business, like most business, don't operate at a huge profit. In fact, Whistlekick, as still a startup business that's trying to find its foothold in the industry, we've been running at a loss from day one. So the losses are even worse because we didn't have the sales. We did not lay anyone off, whether it was our part-time people. We don't have any full-time people here. We do have a number of consultants, a number of subcontractors, but we kept every single person on. I found a way to do that out of my own personal finances because that was important to me because the people that pay me found a way to do that for the most part in my consulting work and some of the other things I do outside of Whistlekick to bring in money. So I felt it was important to do my part where I could. Now, the biggest revenue generator for us up until now has been product. Our foam gear, our uniforms, our apparel, and we still have plenty, but we're not selling any of it. Now, what does that mean? That means that we are sitting on inventory and because of some complications with warehouse and storage and, and the way all that works, and I'm not going to bore you with the nitty gritty, we've actually dropped prices quite a bit. And that lines up with our push into programming. And I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. But bottom line, if you didn't know, most of our equipment is sold on Amazon. That's where we do a huge chunk of our business. We do sell stuff at whistlekick.com, but most of it goes through Amazon because that's where people are. And we've been slashing prices, trying to move that product out because Amazon charges us storage fees. And if we can get rid of it and even just rebuy it and kind of rebuild some things, well, I think that's what we're going to have to do. That's the plan we're moving forward with anyway. So if you get this and you're interested in something, check Amazon first. You'll probably get a really good deal on whatever is left. But what does that leave? Where are we headed in an attempt to make some money? Well, there are two kind of pillars that we're putting our resources into. And by resources, it's really time. 
because there's not a ton of money. It's time. And those are books and those are programming. Now, books are pretty obvious. Most of you know that we released the Martial Artist Handbook the end of last year, and that sold well. It's done well. And despite doing well, you know, it's not a big moneymaker, but it is a moneymaker. It's profitable because we don't have to maintain an inventory of books. If you buy one of those books on Amazon, Amazon prints it, they ship it, and they send us a couple bucks. What other books can we have? We actually have a number of books out there, and we're starting to put more time into releasing books. Some of those books involve transcripts from podcast episodes, and some of them involve some other things. But if you're following our book releases, you're likely to see more and more of those as time comes. In fact, one of the things that we do for our Patreon contributors, if you're in the $25 a month or higher tier, we send you drafts of those books for free. So if you're a a big fan of books and you want to read more of them and you want to read them for no extra charge, the best thing to do is to jump over to the Patreon and get in one of those $25 slots. I think we have a limited number of them. But the other pillar there is programming. We released the Strength and Conditioning Program Ironically, because it, this was not planned, towards the beginning of COVID-19, and that has sold really well. And what's nice about that is, again, we don't have to maintain an inventory. You buy it, it's information, and you use it, and your life gets better, and we get a few dollars, and everybody wins. And so we're doing more and more of that. As I record this, the first draft of the speed development program is nearly done, and In fact, by the time we release this episode, it's probably going to be up. So just pay attention. Go to whistlekick.com. You'll see it in the store there. And this is where we're headed. Because as I was working on the speed program, I realized that there were a number of other things that my experience, my knowledge of, let's say, physical development, working on the body through all the various aspects of training that I've done in and outside of martial arts, there's a lot that we can do there. So there is going to be more. We're going to release more of those. In fact, there's a roadmap that's probably going to take us three to five years to work through because there are so many programs and I've only got so much time. If you are interested in getting better at the physical skills that are related to not just martial arts, but life through the perspective, through the lens of martial arts, These are the programs for you because I am not writing these for every person. I'm writing these for martial artists and they work. I've mentioned Patreon a few times. Patreon, you probably know what it is by now. And it's not a big moneymaker, but it helps, right? And this is where we have shifted. In the beginning days of Whistlekick, it was okay, let's make foam sparring gear and let's make it better than anyone else. And that will make us financially stable. And that has never worked. And it hasn't worked because we don't have the time and we don't have the money to really address this industry. This is a big challenge because of the sheer investment that needs to happen. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not still looking for financial partners. In fact, I sent off an email yesterday to an investment firm that I have some connection to to see, hey, can we partner up? Can we finally put the accelerator down in this car and drive it the way it needs to be driven. I get emails from people all the time. Well, not so much the last couple of months, but often saying, when are you going to be back in stock with this size, this color? And it's so much more complicated than you might imagine. If you, maybe you run a store, maybe you run an office and you say, you know, we're out of pens. Let's get more pens. It's not that simple because we're in charge of the manufacturing. I don't make it here. It is made in a single factory based on our designs, our proprietary information, and there are so many variables, so many more things that I ever would have expected. And so we had to diversify. But I still believe if we can get the right help, the right partners, and the right money behind it, it will take off. Any of you who have used that equipment know what I'm talking about. It is good stuff. Now onto the content side. If you've been paying attention to Whistlekick in the last year, you know that we've been doing a bunch of different stuff content-wise. Whistlekick Live, which is the new kind of rebrand of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio Live. We're calling it Whistlekick Live because it's really expanded beyond the concepts and the vibe that Martial Arts Radio has. That's a show that 
we're doing the first Tuesday of the month live on Facebook. Of course, we still have First Cup live on YouTube on weekdays. And there's more coming. There's a fictional reality, I guess we can call it a series, that we're working on. I'm almost ready to release some of that content publicly and getting a lot of feedback on it as we try to develop that because you know what? Doing fiction, acting, that's not something I've done before. And it's hard work. And shooting it myself is hard work. But we're getting better. It's getting better. And hopefully you'll see that soon. Other types of content, I don't know yet. But we're continuing to look at it. What's the goal here? The goal is to give you as much value as we can, to flood you with options for free content, free video, free audio, free writing, because you know we've got the blog at whistlekick.com and a bunch of other stuff that we do on the writing side, the newsletter. And the hope is that you get enough value from that that you want to kind of pass back in a sense to buy something that maybe you were going to buy it anyway, or you were thinking about it anyway. And because we've given you so much value, you say, you know what, I'm going to buy from them because I appreciate what they're doing and I want them to keep doing it. That's not a, a secret business model. There are plenty of businesses that do things like that. In fact, that's kind of the new business model on the internet. And it works well. And it's working well for us. It's just going to take more. And so that's what we're doing. We're continuing to find more and give you more options for the things that you're interested in and the things you're willing to part with your hard-earned dollars for. Now, I hinted at apparel. I didn't really talk much about that. The apparel falls into a slightly different category, and this isn't any secret. If you make a purchase, you can easily figure this out, so I don't mind giving away this information. Our apparel is made on demand. If you go into whistlekick.com, you buy a shirt, like I'm wearing the, uh, I think this one's still available, the Kick Heads Pet Dogs t-shirt that we made a few months ago. We don't make it. We don't put it in a box. We don't have it printed. There's a company that we partner with. In fact, there are a few of them, depending on what you're buying, that when you purchase it, they make it, they ship it, they put our name on it, and they send us a couple dollars. It's not much money, but it saves us from having to pay for the inventory. And I'm really glad right now that we're not sitting on thousands or tens of thousands of dollars of apparel inventory. One of the things that we've done in the last few months is that all apparel is limited time. And if you've been checking out whistlecake.com, you see that we've been pulling down product, even though it hasn't been selling because of what we're facing right now with COVID-19. And we're going to continue to do that. And that is because we tried the other way. And people, I think, got bored of what we had. So now there's this constant flow of let's develop new product. In fact, I've got a sketch on my desk, something I came up with couple months ago that I've got to try to turn into a graphic for a shirt. And if you're not checking those out, you're going to miss out because we're going to continue to rotate that inventory or at least the availability. It's not inventory. And I uh, hope that that inspires people to make a purchase. And that's all I really know right now. Are there other things that are going to happen? Of course. If you know anything about me, you know that I'm constantly looking at what's next, what we can try, what might make sense, what can we throw against the wall to see what sticks. And some of the stuff that we do sticks. Most of it doesn't. But that's part of being in business. And I'm going to continue to that, maintain that mindset because I think that's important. And maybe we don't all do that in our martial arts training, but hopefully you're trying new things all the time to see what works, whether it's your sparring or whether it's where and when and how you practice. Experimentation is important. In fact, if you read the book or buy the course, yes, we made a course a long time ago, How Not to Hold a Martial Arts Tournament, the heart of that book is about changing 15% every year. If you host a tournament, some kind of competition, really any sort of event, here's the secret as far as I'm concerned. Make it 15% different every time. Because let's say you had a, a successful event and you're going to do it again and you change 15% of it. It's still going to be at least 85% is good. Let's say all the new things you try completely flop. You're still hitting 85%, but more than likely, half of it 
or more is going to be good. And so now you're somewhere in the 90% mark. And then you keep that stuff and then you repeat year after year. And if you do that, whether it's in martial arts or in your professional career or anything else, if you're constantly looking at that iteration, that iterative model, things get a lot better and you come up with some really cool stuff. Don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to experiment because that's what we're doing over here. And that's what all success really comes from is some manner of trial and error coming up with a new thing. I hope you got some value out of this. Whether or not you're really interested in the behind the scenes, I hope you can appreciate why we did an episode like this. And if you want to check out other episodes, maybe this one was or wasn't your bag of tea, don't forget, we've got all of our episodes. Every single one we've ever done is available. A lot of podcasts will give you the most recent 100, for example. We don't. We give you all of them. They're available on YouTube. They're available in your podcast feed. They're available at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Check them out and enjoy. And if you're willing to support us, whether that's through a purchase or Patreon or sharing or anything, thank you. I appreciate it. I could not do this without the support, financial and otherwise, from so many of you. Don't forget, if you do make a purchase at whistlekick.com, use the code PODCAST15. If you make purchases at Amazon, we've got a number of automatic discounts as you buy more stuff. Other ways you can help, share this episode, follow us on social media, all that good stuff. And remember, if you see somebody out there wearing something with Whistlekick on it, or maybe you overhear them talking about a podcast episode, something, anything, say hello, introduce yourself. The goal here is about, remember, connecting martial artists. So take that opportunity, make that connection. We have more that binds us than divides us. If you have suggestions, guest suggestions, feedback, anything like that, let me know. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. <laughs>